This episode of the Nurse Practitioner Podcast is sponsored by Dakin's Wound Cleanser. When you're treating persistent, hard to heal, or complex wounds, you need a solution you can trust, like Dakin's Wound Cleanser. Just how powerful is it? Dakin's Wound Cleanser has been proven to kill even highly resistant bacteria like MRSA and VRE within only 30 seconds. It's non-cytotoxic, shelf-stable for two years, and more cost-effective than other wound cleanser brands. When you need a solution you can count on, ask for Dakin's. Hey, podcast listeners. We know you're tuning into this episode despite your busy schedule because you want to stay up to date in your NP practice. Good news. There's another way we can help, and it comes with the opportunity to earn your required CE and advanced pharmacology credits from home or on the go. This fall, join us for the National Conference for Nurse Practitioners, a twice-yearly virtual event sponsored by us at the podcast. With over 35 sessions delivered by expert speakers on a broad range of clinical topics in primary, urgent, acute, and emergency care, NCNP has you covered. You and your peers will enjoy talks on clinical guideline updates, best practice advancements, and professional development trends in all specialty areas. Attend the virtual event live from October 18th through the 20th, 2023, or tune into recorded sessions at your convenience anytime during the 90 days after the live stream event. Either way, you can claim up to 55 CE credits and 30.5 advanced pharmacology hours through the 90-day deadline. Visit tnpj.com and click the NCNP tab to learn more and register. We look forward to seeing you. This episode of the Nurse Practitioner Podcast, Dr. Tracy Kirkland discusses food insecurity. Thanks for joining us today, Dr. Kirkland. Thank you for having me, and thank you for this window of opportunity to share information about something that's very passionate to me and my career. Excellent. So let's start with this. What is food insecurity? Thank you for that very important question. Food insecurity is a very complex construct or problem, and it's currently a public health crisis. It has been defined as the lack of food and or access to food at all times for an active, healthy life for all household members. The term is pretty complex in that there are a variety of definitions and it's defined differently by various groups within the United States and internationally. Food insecurity is associated with a variety of risk factors, including poverty, racial discrimination, age, and gender. Thanks for that breakdown. What is the incidence slash prevalence of food insecurity? Food insecurity affects more than 34 million people. And if we break that down further, it affects approximately 9 million children and approximately 8% of older adults. Food insecurity is prevalent at all levels, meaning it affects local households, individuals on a state level, nationally, internationally and globally. 53 million people used food pantries within the last two years. That's a lot of individuals. When we delineate further and examine food insecurity as it relates to population health, the prevalence of food insecurity illuminates health disparities and inequities related to race, ethnicity, and gender. Rates of food insecurity is higher in all households with children, including approximately 12.5%. In households with children under the age of six, we see that percentage rate of 12.9%. Households headed by single women, we see the incidence of food insecurity at approximately 24.3%, compared to that of single men at 16.2%. Women living alone are affected 
at rates of approximately 13.2% compared to men who reside alone at rates of 12.3%. Households with Blacks, non-Hispanic women, approximately 19.8% of individuals suffer from food insecurity. Hispanic reference persons per the USDA are affected at approximately 16.2%. And I would like to pause and say reference meaning that these are individuals who have been identified within the adult household as members who either own the home and are renters. Households with incomes less than 185% of the poverty rate are also affected by food insecurity. There is a threshold of approximately 26.5% of individuals who live below the federal poverty line. And in 2021, that poverty line was indicated as being individuals who reside in homes where there is approximately $27,479 that is coming in for a family of four. So if we think about the prevalence, we examine food insecurity across population health, We examine it by gender, by race, by ethnicity, and we also include other variables, including income and educational status, as well as marital status. Those are some staggering statistics. Yes, they are. There is work to do. Can you describe risk factors related to food insecurity? Yes. Again, as mentioned previously, being Black and or being Hispanic, gender in terms of women, being single compared to married, living below poverty lines, having multiple chronic health conditions, residing alone, and or having diminished social supports are all intersections that relate to risk factors or individuals who may be at risk for being food insecure. Thanks so much for sharing. Can you describe reliable and valid tools or instruments that measure food insecurity? Sure. The USDA has several instruments that are valid and reliable. We have the 18-item questionnaire that was um, produced years ago. Following it, It was condensed to a more user-friendly version, which included a six-item screening questionnaire. And most recently, we're using the food hunger vital sign that is actually a two-item questionnaire that can be used in any healthcare setting, community setting, to assess individuals who may be at risk for food insecurity. It is very important to have valid and reliable screening tools, which are clinical indicators of addressing the public health crisis of food insecurity. This is helpful info for our listeners. What is the link between social support and food insecurity? With regards to social support and food insecurity, there have been some recent studies addressing the link between social support, loneliness, and food insecurity. It is postulated that when individuals have decreased social support and or who are considered lonely or described as being lonely and or socially isolated, that they tend to have decreased access to food, decreased purchase power, and the decrease in communal settings, meaning fellowshipping with other individuals. And as a result, we are thinking as researchers that that is leading to increased risk for food insecurity. While there are some research studies, additional research studies are needed to extrapolate data to further explore in specific populations. For example, our older Americans. We have a lot of information, a lot of research studies on our um, pediatric patients and some 
studies that explore our obstetric and or pregnant individuals, but we need additional research to study this phenomena further. Most recently this year, there has been information that loneliness is uh, has reached endemic levels and more resources have been allocated to study this. So stay tuned. I think more information, not only um, with its link to food insecurity, but to other chronic diseases will emerge in the near future. We appreciate you detailing that link. Now, what is the link between loneliness and food insecurity? Again, because individuals who tend to reside alone or who may have disabilities or inability to um, socialize, there is a thought that there is decreased access to food, decreased purchase of food, and oftentimes eating by themselves, being socially isolated from others has been postulated to be linked to food insecurity. One such program here in the Houston region used nurses to do home visits to some of our older population to provide support, to provide face-to-face interaction to be able to address not just food insecurity, but other social determinants of health as well, and it's linked to chronic diseases. So again, stay tuned. I think that there is a lot of work on the horizon with regards to loneliness. And as a researcher myself, I conducted a study that Examine approximately 57 older women within the Houston region, and I saw similar results. This is insightful. Thanks for sharing. Sure. Thank you for asking. These are great questions. What is the significance or relationship of food insecurity on chronic disease? With regards to chronic disease, there is an intersectionality with food insecurity possibly exacerbating health outcomes related to chronic diseases. And when we think about chronic diseases, we tend to think about hypertension, diabetes, cancer, obesity, a variety of conditions, which oftentimes in and of itself, if not well controlled with medication management, pharmacological management, non-pharmacological management, for example, exercise can lead to poor health outcomes. So when we add an additional variable like food insecurity, these individuals tend to have less resources to purchase nutritional food. So food that may help in mitigating their diabetes and helping to lower their hemoglobin A1C levels and to improve their blood pressures. So the thought is that When individuals are food insecure, they have more risk for having poor health outcomes. It's unfortunate to hear, but thanks for bringing that to our attention. Sure. There, again, is work to do as healthcare providers and and ensuring that our patients, our community members have access to services within the community, such as food pantries, and that they're able to navigate the nuances and applying for federal programs such as SNAP and for WIC, which also, when we know individuals have those services, they tend to have more food or more nutritious foods within their home that can also help to improve their overall health. Finally, what is the role of nurse practitioners in addressing food insecurity in the community and healthcare setting? That question can be answered in many different ways, and thank you very much for asking. In the era of value-based practice, it it is important to ensure that we're, first of all, screening within our healthcare system and not only identifying individuals who are at risk, but linking them to community services. Nurse practitioners play a significant role in addressing food insecurity in terms of educating our next generation of nurse practitioners to screen for it in the healthcare settings, to ensure that we in our clinical practice are encouraging our organizations to include it as a metric 
and not only to include it as a metric, but when individuals are identified to be food insecure, to link them to the community in terms of having necessary services. For example, WIC, SNAP, and to have a location of where food pantries are within their catchment region. Thanks so much for your time today, Dr. Kirkland. We really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. And again, stay tuned. This is a, an emerging public health issue, and it addresses social determinants of health as well as the political determinants of health. Thank you for this time. For more great content from The Nurse Practitioner, be sure to visit us online at tnpj.com for the latest NCPD articles, columns, and much more. Please leave us a five-star review on iTunes and Spotify as it helps with the podcast's visibility and helps us to keep bringing you this great content. Also, don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn at The Nurse Practitioner Journal and on Twitter at TNPJ underscore journal. Thanks for listening. This podcast does not constitute medical advice and should not be taken as such and does not replace professional judgment or advice. The ideas and viewpoints expressed on this podcast do not reflect the official position of the speakers, authors, affiliated organizations, the Nurse Practitioner Journal, or Walters Kluwer. Please note that the hosts of the Nurse Practitioner Podcast are not clinicians. However, we created the Nurse Practitioner Podcast to bring you relevant clinical information by NPs for NPs. Thanks again for listening.